and a murder comes in over the radio while I am investigating a unrelated case, sending us to 704 Jones Grove. But first, we will need to stop at City Hall to get a form. There's an enforcer running by, perhaps on his way to the murder case itself. So the name of this case will be the Corporal Murderer. So we're gonna to need to use the map to find exactly where this is taking place. 704 Jones Grove. And let's head over there now. So we head up the stairs and of course the gate is down as the enforcers are investigating this murder. So we're gonna to need to wait around a little bit. But I think I get a little impatient here and I decide, let's go through the vent. Let's see if we can find some clues early in the process rather than wait for the enforcers to open up and have to play the light switch game as we saw in a previous episode I'm just gonna go through the vent so we'll use the map in order to ensure that we are going the right direction here moving right along through the vent the map confirms that we are on the right path it's quite dark in here so we'll turn on a little flashlight. I think I take a left here. And we're going to be just above the kitchen or living room of the house, the apartment rather, with a murder victim. So we open the vent, flash a little light down there. And sure enough, there's an enforcer right beneath us. Wow, that was close. So we're going to wait around in here. Hope they clear out. It's as if he can hear me at this point, which is very disconcerting. We'll wait. He's got the gun and he's waving that around. He's investigating, looking for the source of the sound or whoever flashed a flashlight down there. Who is it? Is me. He moves off to another room and a strange sound is heard as if they knocked down a door. He's asking the other enforcer what's going on as i'm waiting in this cold vent i become cold so as i'm shivering they might be able to hear me but eventually oh look there's still two down there eventually we're gonna have to get brave we're freezing it looks like they're starting to walk away and maybe we can make our descent into the apartment and begin our investigation in a moment so my cold pi body begins to carefully head down this uh hole in the vent the air vent itself, hoping to land on top of uh, some sort of kitchen appliance, the refrigerator. And here we are. Ooh, you're not being followed. A possible clue. He wrote it to himself, and there's our victim here. He left, the murderer left a note that says, didn't have what it takes, promote me, they must earn my respect. That sounds like it could be a murder committed by a co-worker, one that was spurned for a potential promotion. So let's go ahead and figure out what's the deal with this cadaver. We've got his fingerprint, and we're going to need to search and analyze this to see what the deal is. He was killed by a small caliber bullet. So he was shot to death by a, it seems to be, an enraged subordinate. We've got the time of death right there. The guy left a card. Ooh, an enforcer just outside there. So we're going to need to do something about that and potentially close this door. There we go. Hey, we found his work ID. It says he's the head of HR, Keandre Calderon. Uh, and he works for a company called Red Corporation. So we're going to need that because our first best clue is to investigate his place of work uh, based on the note that the murderer left behind. But it never hurts to go through the files of your victim. So I'm going to go into the closet here and skim through all of his files in order to sort of just fill out some extra information about our Vic. Good standard practice. We've got the key to his place. Helpful, helpful. Oh, what's this under his bed? A diary entry? Uh, outside of Cotton, there was an average tall, short, same person? What? Very strange 
uh, list of attributes. Average, tall, and short. Hmm. Well, I don't really trust him on that one because it's a little contradictory. Here's the password to his computer and safe. Another business card. And lo and behold, a note from the building supervisor. He said, Has, have you been being stalked by a tall male? No, the supervisor doesn't really want to help with that. So poor Keandre has been on his own dealing with a stalker. So let's go back and take a look at this corpse again, see if we missed any clues. One thing we forgot to do, which we're going to need to do in a moment, is to get our scanner out and begin looking for footprints. But someone wrote in blood or in red writing, put a pin on it, strange cryptic message. Let's go ahead and scan all these. We've got some normal shoes. These kind of these boot prints all around here really look like enforcer prints. Heel size 16. Could also be an enforcer. I'm not sure if enforcers wear heels or not. Heel size 7. So there's been a lot of footprints in here. And one can assume that these are enforcers because they love to just muddy up the crime scene horribly. Oh my god, look at that. Type E fingerprint, unknown fingerprint on the murderer's note itself. That is a smoking gun of a clue that we're going to be able to take advantage of to potentially solve this murder pretty easy. We now know that it was likely a perpetrator from his work, and we have a fingerprint of that. So let's get some more clues, though. Head into the safe, see if the, anything was stolen from the safe. But it doesn't look like that kind of murder. It's just got Keandre's fingerprint in there and a sync disk upgrade vial. Might as well grab that. Let's check out his computer then, How shall we? We have the password to get into his computer, and there could be all kinds of information in here. One thing for sure is we're going to need to look at his profile in order to get a little bit more information about our Vic. And now let's check out some of these emails. Uh, if you were having a conflict at work, it could be shown here. So what do we got here? We're going to try to print out any of these that are suspicious. Dr. Ioki, I'm sorry to send another message, but I need help. Can't shake the feeling someone's following me. A male with brown hair. What should I do? That seems to match some other notes that we've seen. So, boy, we should probably print this one, huh? This could be a clue. There we go. Save that. What else we got here? Now, Keandre wrote an email to Lucas Collins and said, Hey, you've been dealing drugs at work. I'm going to get you fired. Could Lucas Collins have a motive to murder our poor head of HR? Quite possibly, so let's keep that. And now we make our way out of here. Hopefully the enforcers don't see us leave the crime scene. They did not, uh, which gives us an opportunity to sort of walk out of here nice and safe, as long as we know where we're going next, which at this point is likely to be red corporation this is where our best clues are we need to go to keandre's place of work start asking questions start looking for who works here if anybody has that fingerprint that we're looking for type e so first we've arrived at red corporation we knock on the door and it looks like a receptionist is answering so we can ask them you know what their name is of course they don't want to help us but maybe this receptionist will allow us to get free reign of the building so we can buy a temporary guest pass for thirty dollars thirty starch bucks well worth it considering the money that we have from our last murder mystery that we solved in the previous episode so a two-hour guest pass for thirty dollars i'll take that all i need to do is to rummage through some files here and find out just each and every person who works for this place so over here in the break room, it seems that we have the employee photo board, and this is perfect for us. This is going to show every single person who works here. And at this point, all of them are suspects. Granted, you know, male with uh, brown hair seems to be a common factor in a lot of the documentation that Keandre was writing as he was suspicious of being stalked by a potential um, angry person for not promoting them. This is a male with brown hair. Ah, Lucas Collins also works at HR. And um, Keandre had wrote a pretty scathing email to him. This person also has brown hair. I'm not sure if they're a male. 
and Keandre himself, head of HR, the boss around here. So that's fine. We've got the information we need, so we can just get out of Red Corporation now. We have a list of every single person who works for them. And the best thing for us to do at this point, the greatest tool in a nice PI's arsenal, is to head to the government database back at the government building. Because we're going to look up each and every member of Red Corporation's work roster. Um, it's also going to give us all their fingerprints as we type them in. And... If any one of them have the fingerprint of type E, well, we're going to have a very likely culprit of this murder. So Bella, type G fingerprint, female, not our perp. So we're, we've ruled out Bella Lambert. And we move on to the next one. This is a big part of uh, PI work. It's about doing the, the, the grunt tasks, getting through everything. Lucas Collins, someone we were highly suspicious of, is type A. Lucas, you're lucky. We thought it was you. Turns out it isn't. Reno Sakurai. Type I fingerprint. Not our gal. Who's next here? Ah, Tanisha. This was the receptionist. Could the receptionist have committed the murder? Nope, type J fingerprint. Also a female. But we don't know whether that was incorrect because the person also said they were tall, average, and short or something like that. Um, so I'm not sure Keandre had a good handle on who was chasing him. So Kia Okoro, type K fingerprint, not our person. We have two more people to investigate from Red Corporation. So let's move on to this. Christian Rivera. Oops, spell it correctly, Stens. You can get it. There it is. Christian Rivero. It's a 50% chance to be you. Nope, type L. So we have the last person, and if this doesn't work, then we're back to square one. It turns out it wasn't done by a co-worker. So we need to check out this Yi Jun Shan. Sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation. What do we have here? Type E fingerprint? Ye? You did it? You left the card? Your fingerprints was on the card? I can't believe what we're seeing here. And you're a male with brown hair, I believe. It's even further shown by the fingerprint that we got as confirmed to be from Yi Jun. It's even reclassified it. So he's got a fingerprint on the card. And now we have everything we need. This is it. I When I see this kind of guaranteed evidence, we know his place. That's going to be part of our turning in the re resolution. 1401 Shepherd Terrace. We may have to find him in his home. So the, fir the full name of our killer, we definitely know it's him. What did he do? There's the fingerprint. We're going to use that to say that there's evidence that you were there at the crime scene. You live at 1401 Shepherd Terrace. We have not located the murder weapon, so what we need to do is go find our perpetrator. But first, we're going to need to pick up some handcuffs here from the PI vending machine, which is really going to help us take him down. And we're back at Red Corporation. I still have that guest pass. It's still active. So I'm going to talk to Tanisha for a second and ask her a quick question about do you know this person? We want to see if she knows if uh, Yijun is here. Oh, that's your colleague, you Yijun Chun. They work at that place, Red Corporation. That's where we are. They're here right now. Perfect. So let's look around a little bit, see if we find this brown-haired individual. And lo and behold, he's right back here, the only person working at a computer right now. And I think we just need to take him without him even knowing. We're just going to handcuff him right here and hope that his colleagues don't notice him. Notice this crime that I'm committing. And let's search him, see if he's got anything. Well, he's got his work ID. He's got his wallet. I'm like, I'm taking your money, by the way. And there he has it. He has a pistol on him. He brought his gun to work after using it to commit 
a murder versus the head of HR at his work. Maybe not the brightest criminal. He also brought ammunition, of course. And let's see what we can do with this. So let's ask him a question about that. I'm telling him I'm arresting him for murder. Took you long enough. Well, he confessed. Well, thank you. Goodbye. See you around? Okay. Sorry, that was hilarious. I know you've just arrested me for murder, but hey, see you around. I'll be visiting you in prison, sir. It's time to take this in. I'm feeling very confident that we have solved the corpo murderer in a relatively quick fashion here. So let's ride that elevator back to City Hall, turn it in, and see how we are doing. Now, feeling good about this, I slide the solved case into the case bin tray, if you will, as it processes. We're going to see how we did. Full name, correct. Arrest the killer, correct. Have evidence that places the killer at crime scene, yes. Do I know where the killer lives, yes. Do I have the murder weapon, yes. I got them all correct. Pretty easy case, but nonetheless, excellent to get that full bonus pay. So case has been solved. Another one down for the Stens the PI in Shadows of Doubt. Appreciate all of you guys watching this. Um, if you like this content, you know, help my channel grow by liking and subscribing. There will be plenty more of this where that came from. And thanks everybody for watching. Goodbye.